Hello and welcome everyone to the YouTube channel of Infinity Learn by Shri Chaitanya. And students, today we are going to discuss this MPL Physics paper solutions for you. Okay, and this paper, as I have seen, is really, really very easy. And uh, before discussing, okay, my audio video is clear to all of you, and the recording is perfectly on. Right. So let's do this question. Question number one. They are asking. A closed tube partly filled with water lies on a horizontal plane. Okay. See, if it is partly filled with water, then what will happen? If you rotate it, all the water will go and accumulate here. Okay. All the water will go and accumulate on this side. So, what will happen? Due to the accumulation of the water there, the mass will shift away from the axis. The mass is going to shift away from the axis, and why the and why the water is going to accumulate here because of the centrifugal forces. Okay. so because of the centrifugal force this is the pseudo force experienced by the objects the water will accumulate at the ends of the rod and since the mass is going away from the axis so moment of inertia will increase why because moment of inertia is directly proportional to r square so if the distance of the mass from the axis increases definitely moment of inertia will increase and the first option is correct right now definitely remember that viscosity of the gases increases with temperature so when you increase the temperature viscosity of the gases increases why because viscosity of the gas is nothing related to nothing but it is related to the random motion of the molecules so as you increase the temperature more randomization happens and the molecules of the gases they start vibrating more vigorously because of which the viscosity increases but the viscosity of the liquid is inversely proportional to temperature so if you talk about the viscosity of liquid it reduces with increment in temperature you have to be very careful about this okay so which option is correct only a and c right <clears throat> now two rain drops falling through air have radii in the ratio they have terminal so what is the formula for terminal velocity 2 by 9 into R square into rho minus sigma into g by eta. So, anyways, it is directly proportional to R square. It is directly proportional to R square. So, V1 by V2 is R1 by R2 whole square. Now, what is R1 by R2? 1 is to 2. So, answer is 1 is to 4. Okay. Now, fourth part. Viscosity is the property of the liquids by virtue of which liquid opposes the relative motion of its layers. in a liquid the liquid flows like this in different layers okay so when one of the layers is opposing the motion of another layer of the liquid this property of the liquid is known as viscosity let's call this as layer number 1 sorry layer a and this is as layer b so layer a is opposing the motion of layer b and this opposition among the layers of the liquid only this is known as viscosity of the liquid now a solid sphere falls with a terminal velocity 10 cm per second in air if it is allowed to fall in vacuum oh my god see terminal velocity concept comes only and only when there is a viscous drag on the ball so ball is coming with mg and there is a constant viscous force acting on it and what is that viscous force 6 pi eta rv so it comes into action only if there is medium if this ball is going down in certain medium if there is no medium it is allowed to fall in vacuum then why the hell there will be any viscous force and if there is no viscous force there will be no concept of terminal velocity so answer will be never be attained okay now viscous force acting on a small steel sphere while falling in a liquid with a velocity v is f okay now what is the viscous force f it is 6 pi eta r v then the viscous force acting on another steel sphere of double the radius okay double the radius but moving with a double velocity 2v as well okay and 2v and v both are less than terminal velocity fine so you can say f dash is 4 times 6 pi eta rv that is 4 times f do you understand this 4 times f so answer is 4f right now third is A fly, the diameter of a flywheel increases by one percent. The percentage increase in moment of inertia. See, for a flywheel, moment of inertia is directly proportional to r square, or we can say it is directly proportional to diameter square, right? Now we will say delta i by i is equals to two times delta d by t, right? If diameter increases by one percent, so obviously delta i by i. 
into 100 percentage wise will be 2 times delta d by d into 100 percentage times. Now delta d by d into 100 is 1 percent given. So what is the answer? 2 percentages. Got it? Okay, now 8 1. 3 thin rods each of length L mass M are placed along x, y and z axis. Okay. So one of the rod is this. Another rod is this and another rod is this. There are three rods. Okay. So moment of inertia about z axis. See, if you talk about z axis, then moment of inertia of rod 1, 2, 3. Moment of inertia of I3 will become 0. I1 will be simply axis perpendicular to the rod passing through its end. Answer is ml square by 3. I2 will also be ml square by 3. So answer is Overall moment of inertia will be I1 plus I2 plus I3, which is 2 by 3 ml square. Got it? The moment of inertia of a solid sphere of radius R and uh, density, sorry, not radius, it is density rho and radius capital R about its diameter. Okay, what is the moment of inertia? For a solid sphere, it is 2 by 5 m r square. Now, what is mass? It is density into volume, 4 by 3 pi r cube into r square. So, it will be 8 by 15 into 22 by 7 into rho into r to the power 5. Just by seeing the options, I am saying, because in the options, there is uh, pi is not visible. That is why I opened up pi. So it is 176, I guess. I don't need to write. I can see here. 176 by 105 r to the power 5 rho. Okay. Now a couple produces purely rotational motion. Why? Because suppose I take a rod and couple means equal and opposite forces. So force wise, what will happen? The net force is 0. Definitely it's a couple. So net force is 0. But the direction of movement is same. So net torque is not 0. It is 2 into F into uh, suppose this length is L by 2. So L by 2. So answer is F into L. Okay. I hope you must have read these things. Now the radius of gyration of a spherical shell of radius R about a tangent. So this is a spherical shell about a tangent. So first of all, do you know about this axis passing through center of mass? And about this, we need to find out. See, there's a simple formula. We will apply the concept of parallel axis theorem and we will say that I about center of mass plus M, whatever is this distance, let's say this distance is X. So MX is square. Okay. So ICOM, everybody knows it is 2 by 3 MR square plus what is X here? X is equals to radius only MR square. So what is this? 5 by 3 mr square this is i and if you want to find out the radius of gyration so we will equate it with m k square m and m gets cancelled so where is your what is your k radius of gyration will be root over 5 by 3 times r got it now 12th the moment of inertia of a circular ring of mass 1 kg about an axis passing through its center circular ring Okay, the moment of inertia of a circular ring of mass 1 kg about an axis passing through its center and perpendicular to its plane. Okay, passing through its center and perpendicular to its plane. So, formula is very simple. MR square is equals to I. So, or we can say MD square by 4 is equals to I. The radius is half of the diameter. I guess every data is given. They have given you 4. Okay. Okay, so 4 is equals to 1 into d square by 4 and from here you can say d is equals to 4 centimeter. Right? Very good. 13th. Which of the following is necessary and sufficient condition for Cf is equals to minus Kx. This is the basic equation of SHM, right? So for SHM, we you need a restoring force and displacement from equilibrium position and there must be a relationship of propor proportionality between them. That means F must be directly proportional to minus X. Where X is the displacement from equilibrium or mean position, F is the restoring force. Okay. Now, 
Select the correct statements. A simple harmonic motion is necessarily periodic. Yes, it is necessary period. Necessarily periodic. See, nothing. <laughs> a simple harmonic motion having an amplitude and time period T is represented. Okay, fine. We can compare it with this. We will say it is a sine omega t plus phi. Right. So omega is pi, and omega is. 2 pi upon time period is equals to pi. So time period is 2 seconds. Number one, and amplitude is 5 meters or 5 units. Number two. So I guess first option is correct. Got it? Now, which of the following statements are true? A body can have constant speed but varying velocity. No, it's not possible. Because if speed is constant, then velocity and but varying velocity. Same. A constant speed but varying velocity. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, sorry. Yes, it is possible. Yes, it is true. In uniform circular motion, na? In uniform circular motion, same thing happens. Yes or no? In uniform circular motion, the object is moving with a fixed speed. The speed is fixed. That means the magnitude is fixed. Okay. But direction is constantly changing, and hence velocity is, and hence, where of the direction is changing. So we can say yes. Vector v is changing, but its magnitude, that means its speed, is constant. So yes, it's a possibility. So this option is wrong. This option is wrong because these two options are not containing the first option, right? Now second and fourth are not second and fourth are right, and second and fourth are not containing the second option. So don't even read the second option. Go for third and fourth option, right? And don't even go for third option because if fourth is wrong, then this is the right answer. And if fourth is right, then this is the right answer. That means don't even go for the third option. Just read the first option and fourth option. A body can have velocity without having acceleration. A body can have velocity without having acceleration. Yes, obviously, if acceleration is zero, velocity is constant and it can have velocity. No problem. That means first is right and fourth is right. First and fourth, which combination it contains? Fourth option. So that is how you can go with the fourth option. Okay, I hope you understood my point, and there is no further doubt in that. Okay, clear. Now let's move on to the next question. Okay, now an object thrown vertically upward speed u when it travels five meter in the see. This is a concept, students. I don't want to disturb you. Uh, I don't want to uh, tell you the method. Just remember, see. Whenever the object is going up, and it reaching it is it is reaching the topmost point, its velocity will be zero. So in the last one second, in the last one second, the distance travelled by L. Suppose it is L. In the last one second, and in the next one second, when it starts to come down, it will again travel the same distance. And what is L? L will be half g t square. Why? Because when it is coming down from the topmost point. See the distance it travels in the last one second is equal to the same distance it travels. It is equal to the same distance it travels in the very first second when it is dropped from the height. From any height when you drop it, so you will say u t plus half a t square, right? Now u is zero because you are dropping it from the topmost point. Plus half into minus g into one square. So answer is minus g by two. So Length l distance wise magnitude wise l is what g by two. Now if you take g as ten, then answer is five meter. And if you take g as nine point eight, then answer is four point nine meter. Anyways, in this they have already given it as five meter. So it doesn't matter with what speed you throw, because from where, where whichever height if you drop an object in the very first second it will travel five meter or g by two distance only. That means in the last one second before it reaches the top, it travelled g by two distance only. Are you understanding? So it doesn't matter whether you throw it with 10 meter per second or you throw it with 100 meter per second. Whenever it reaches its topmost point, in the last one second, it will travel 5 meter only. Why? Because when it is coming down from that height, its initial velocity is zero. And the distance travelled in the last one second in going up, and the distance travelled in the very first second in coming down will always be same. So initial velocity doesn't change the fact that when you are dropping the object from a height, the distance travelled by it in the very first second is g by two. 
right? So it doesn't matter whether it's, whether you throw it with u1 or u2, answer will still remain same. That is five meters. Okay. Now moment of inertia of a ring about its diameter is i. The moment of inertia about an axis passing through center perpendicular to its plane is simple. See about its diameter is i. We know that about diameter the formula is m r square by two, and about the axis passing through about the axis passing through its center. Let's say this is i two. This is m r square. So if this is i, then m r square is nothing but two i. Because the moment of inertia about the of the axis passing through the center of the ring is m r square. About the diameter is m r square by two, right? Do you understand this? Simple, na? No? See, this is the disc. Suppose so. This is about the diameter, right? This is about the diameter. And if this is the disc, and we are talking about this axis, central axis, and this is about the central axis. So we should know. You should know this formula that about the diameter, diametrical axis for a ring is m r square by two. For central axis, it is m r square. Right, two spheres of equal masses M1, M2, same. One of which is a thin spherical shell, and other is a solid having the same moment of inertia about their respective diameters. Okay, what is I1? I1 is two by three m r1 square. What is I2? Two by five m r2 square, and we can equate them. So we will say two by three m r one square is equals to two by five m r two square. So r one by r two definitely is three is to five under root. Got it? Now one solid sphere A and another hollow sphere B are of same mass and same outer radii. So one is solid sphere. So it is two by five. M R square that is point four M R square, right? And another one is solid spherical shell. It is two by three M R square that is point six seven M R square. So definitely I B is greater than I A. So there is no doubt about it. It becomes easier to open the open or close a door turning about its hinges if the force is applied farthest away from the door. See if if you have a door at your home, you already know. If it is hinged like this, you don't apply forces here to open the door. You will apply forces at its free end in order to open the door. Yes or no? You use the knob of the door. Why? Because torque is force into distance, right? So if you increase the distance, automatically the force reduces. That is why if you increase this distance r from the axis of rotation, lesser force will be required to give same amount of torque. The distance moved by a freely falling body during first, second, third, and nth second of its motion are proportional to simple. See, if your initial velocity is zero and acceleration is constant, then the ratio of the displacement in equal intervals of time. Remember this formula: ratio of the displacements in equal intervals of time is always one is to three is to five is to seven like that. That means, suppose if a body is starting from rest. And its acceleration is constant. Then the ratio of the displacements in equal intervals of time. That means, let's say first two seconds, then next two seconds, then next two seconds, like this. These are equal intervals. So displacement will be one is to three is to five is to seven. That equal in equal time intervals can be anything. Two seconds or five seconds or ten seconds doesn't matter. Okay, so that is why they are saying first second, second second. So equal time intervals of one second. Right, so they must be the multiples of odd numbers. Right, a vehicle travels half the distance. Okay, whenever you divide the journey into equal distances, okay, then you say like this: n by v is equals to one by v one plus one by v two up till one by v. And we have studied this formula. It's very simple, na? So here there are n is equals to two. So two by v is equals to one by v one plus. One by v two, and you get the answer, right? Now, the speed-time graph graph of a particle moving along fixed direction is as shown in the figure. The distance traveled by the particle. Okay, speed-time graph. The area will represent the distance. 
area will give you what distance the area gives you distance so it is half into base into height answer is how much 0 to 10 seconds okay speed time graph of a particle moving along a fixed direction as shown in the figure the distance traversed by the particle between t equals to 0 to t equals to 10 seconds is half into base into height is 12 right height is 12 right so it is how much 60 meters so answer is 60 meters got it speed is increasing and then speed is decreasing but speed is not becoming negative right okay okay fine this is the answer right 25 a person is moving with a velocity 10 meter per second towards north so it is going 10 upwards and another person is going with 20 meter per second south okay velocity of person is plus 10 let's say and velocity of car is minus 20 so velocity of car with respect to person is velocity of car minus velocity of person so minus 20 minus 10 so answer will be minus 30 meter per second so first option is correct okay just Say that the upper direction is positive, lower direction is negative. So the answer is minus 30, right? Now what is dv by dt? This is acceleration p. Magnitude of change of speed, rate of change of speed, this is q. dr by dt is nothing but rate of change of position, that is velocity. And this is what? Change of at a d mod of this watch d position position this will give you speed actually or magnitude of velocity always right see it's very simple if you differentiate complete velocity dv by dt this is nothing but acceleration if you are differentiating only its magnitude then it is nothing but rate of change of speed only nothing this is not a quant not any physical quantity this is simply rate of change of speed Got it? So likewise, you can say PQRS first option is right. Now, a moving car possesses average velocities in the first, second and third. What is the total distance traveled? Simple. V into T is X. So V1 into T is X1. V2 into T is X2. V3 into T is X3. So V1 is what? 5 into 1. 10 into 1. 15 into 1 that is 5 10 and 15 so total is how much 30 meters right a car at rest accelerates at a speed of 144 kilometer per hour to a speed so final speed is what initial speed is 0 final is 144 kmph immediately write down 144 into 5 by 18 that is how much it is coming out to be 20 or 40 tell me 6 3 is a 6 20 4 is a okay 6 3 is a 6 2 is a 12 6 4 is a 24 3 1 is a 3 8 is a 8 5 is a 40 okay so this is coming out to be 40 meter per second now you will say sir v equals to u plus 80 okay it covers a distance of d accelerates okay so it is 40 is equals to 0 plus a into 20 so from here a is 2 meter per second square so what is distance l is equals to ut plus half 80 square u is 0 half into 2 into t is how much 20 whole square that is 400 meters. Got it? Now, next is moment of inertia of a square sheet of length of mass m and length. Okay, this is a square sheet. Okay, its length is L. About an axis passing through one of its corners. Okay. See, do you know?
the moment of inertia about this axis central axis and what is this distance let's say this x this is the central axis passing through center of mass so icom you very well know for a square disc it is ml square by 12 plus ml square by 12 or you can just remember the result ml square by 6 so if i talk about a square if i talk about a square sheet so the moment of inertia about an axis passing through it like this is ml square by 6 but they are not asking about this axis they are asking about this corner axis can you see that this corner axis like this like this so what will you do you can apply parallel axis theorem and you can say sir it's very easy no need to worry i will say yes about this we want so applying parallel axis theorem we will say i is equals to icom plus mx square so it is ml square by 6 plus m into x is how much c complete diameter is root 2l half of it will be what l by root 2 right so you can say l by root 2 whole square so it is ml square by 6 Plus m l square by two. So how much will this be? Two by three m l square. I hope you got the answer right. Now a car is moving with an initial velocity u. If car stops after applying brake with a distance twenty, okay. See, final velocity is zero. Initial velocity is u, right? And the distance is l. Retardation is minus a. Let's say. So you will say that v square is equals to u square plus two a l, right? Zero is equals to u square minus two a l. So technically, l is u square by two a, right? Now they are saying, if if suppose they double the speed of the car, then how much distance will it travel? If the velocity of the car is doubled, then how much distance will it cover after applying brakes? Okay, so it is a twenty-four is two u. So it is two times u whole square by two a. That is four times u square by two a. Okay. So you will say L is equals to four into L dash is equals to four into L. So it is four into twenty. Answer is simply eighty meters. That's all. Got it? Now thirty one. See, I have been telling you every time that in motion under gravity, acceleration is always minus g, and velocity is always reducing when once you throw it. velocity is u it reduces to zero and then it reduces to negative value that is minus u so technically it starts from u and goes to minus u this is the total journey it travels so this is the velocity time graph where the slope is negative where the slope is acceleration which is minus g all the time because many of the students think that initially the velocity from v becomes zero and then again becomes v no my dear if you have thrown it with u it comes back with minus u so velocity has reduced from u to minus u it is continuously decreasing so the slope is continuously negative slope is not positive that is why third option is right okay here the slope is completely constant and negative because slope is what acceleration and throughout the motion acceleration is constant and that is minus g why because throughout the motion acceleration is acting downward that is minus g acceleration is not changing its direction velocity is changing its direction initially it is in the upward direction it becomes zero and then it is in the downward direction like this okay remember this okay what is torque vector r cross vector f how do you write it i cap j cap k cap 1 2 2 2 1 1 okay 
वेक्टर आर इज गिवन वेक्टर एफ इज गिवन ओके नाउ वी वॉन्ट द कोफिशियंट ऑफ ओनली जे कैप वॉट इज द कोफिशियंट ऑफ जे कैप इट इज वन इंटू वन माइनस टू इंटू टू सो इट इज वन माइनस फोर टाइम्स जे कैप दैट इज माइनस थ्री जे कैप सो टेक्निकली योर आंसर इज थ्री ओके दे जस्ट वॉन्ट द कोफिशियंट और दे जस्ट वॉन्ट द कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ द टॉर्क अलॉन्ग वाई एक्सेस दे जस्ट वॉन्ट द कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ द टॉर्क अलॉन्ग वाई एक्सेस the body at rest initial u is 0 and a is constant so you will say displacement in nth second will be u plus a by 2 into 2n minus 1 that is a by 2 into 2n minus 1 and to overall displacement in n seconds is u into n u t plus half a t square half into a into n square U is zero, so it will be a by two into n square. Now, if you can take the ratio, nth upon overall, it will be two by n minus one by n square. Got it? When there is no external torque acting on the system, see, torque is equals to I alpha, right? If tau is zero, alpha is zero. That's all. Fourth option is correct. Two point masses, point three and point seven kg are fixed at the ends of a rod. Okay, there these are the. Okay, rod is one meter long. This is point three kg and this is point seven kg. The rod is set rotating about an axis perpendicular to its length and passing through the center of mass. Okay, let's say the center of mass is here. Then the moment of inertia of the system is simple. Let's say this is m one. Let's say this is m two. You find out this x one and find out this x two. We know the formula also. I don't think I need to tell you what is x one. X one is m two upon m one plus m two into length, and x two is m one upon m one plus m two into l. Now, once you know these things, moment of inertia will be m one x one square plus M two x two square. That's all. Put the values and get the answer. Right? Oh, but it's pretty easy and pretty pretty simple. You can solve it. Point three plus point six will be one. So x one will be equal to yes, yes, yes. Simple, simple, simple. Students, you can do it. Answer is point two one. Clearly, it is visible. Okay. Now this is interesting. They have given that the structure is somewhat like this. That this is one ring and this is another ring placed like this. Can you see that in this question? These are the two rings and this is the axis of rotation, right? So the structure is rotating like this. So simple. What is the moment of inertia of this ring? Of this ring. See, we will apply parallel axis theorem. We will say that about its central axis. So let's find out I one first of all. So it will be m r square by Or m r square only plus m into x square. Now what is x? Is r. So i one is two m r square. Now let's talk about this ring i two. Again we will apply parallel axis theorem, but here the central axis will be this. So we will say i c o m plus m x square. Now this is the diametrical axis. So diametrical axis is what? M R square by two plus what is this distance? This distance is two R this time. Okay, so it will be M R square two by two plus four M R square. M R square by two plus four M R square. So I two will be nine by two M R square. Right now, overall moment of inertia will be sum of both. So nine by two m r square plus two m r square. I guess it is thirteen by two m r square. I hope you understand how we are finding out the axis. See, I'll tell you. One ring is like this. So this is m r square, and the axis is here. So this is cent. Um, this is the axis that is passing through center of mass. This is another axis about which we need to find out moment of inertia. So what we do? We say I C O M plus 
m x square the distance between these two axes so that is why icom for this axis is mr square so plus what is this gap mr what is this gap r so mr square plus mr square answer is 2 mr square but for this axis for this ring about this axis so see this is the axis about which we want to find out the center of mass so what is the axis which is parallel to this axis but passing through the center of mass of this ring you will say this axis diametrical axis diametrical axis so we will say the moment of energy about diametrical axis will be mr square by 2 plus m into x square what is the distance between this axis and this axis you will say 2r that is why i have written mr square by 2 about diametrical axis plus m into 2r whole square this is how you will get the right answer okay in measurement of a mass of a given object by the principle of moment the meter scale is hung okay so there is a meter scale meter scale means 100 cm so there is a mass hung of mass 3 kg okay 3 kg is hung here at a distance of 50 cm another is hung at a distance 20 cm from the end that means from here it is 30 cm they are saying that it is hung at from the end it is 20 cm so from this point is 30 cm do you understand this so this is let's say mass m so you will say mg into 30 will produce this torque and opposite torque will be produced by 50 into 30 right so from here you will cancel and m will be equals to 5 kg simple you will balance their torques okay because this m is going to provide a torque in the opposite direction that is k cap and this 3 kg is going to provide the torque in anti clockwise direction that is minus k cap okay sorry this is going to rotate clockwise and this is going to rotate anti clockwise got it now this for this there's a direct formula student q is equals to pi r to the power 4 into p on 8 eta okay so you can apply this formula directly and get the Okay, 8 eta L. So simple. You are saying radius is reduced to half and p is doubled. So q is directly proportional to r to the power 4 into p. So basically, q dash will be r by 2 into 2 p. So you can say q dash is equals to q upon 2 to the power 4 into 2 that is q by 8 okay now here there is a formula whenever two tubes capillary tubes are in parallel then you can say 1 by i is equals to 1 by i1 plus 1 by sorry 1 by l equivalent is 1 by l1 plus 1 by l2 remember this formula okay so your option is fourth option is correct right Now a square frame is made up of four identical rods, each of length m, length one meter, and mass 0.5 kg. The radius of variation of the system about one of its sides. This is a very oh, sorry. This is a very interesting question. This is one rod. This is another rod. This is another rod. This is another rod. Where is your axis? You will say, sir, this is my axis of rotation. Let's say this is rod number one, rod number two, rod number three, rod number four. So first of all, I one is zero. And I two and I four are similar m l square by three because for a rod oscillate, oh sorry, rotating about its ends end perpendicular to it is m l square by three. Now what about I three? See, I three is nothing. The rod is completely every point on the rod is at the same distance l from the axis. So no need to change anything. It will be m l square. So, if you write down the overall moment of inertia, will be four by three m l square. Oh, sorry, not four by three. Let me write properly. It is i one plus i two plus i three plus i four. So, it will be what? I will be zero plus m l square by three plus 
एम एल स्क्वायर बाय थ्री प्लस एम एल स्क्वायर सो इट इज टू बाय थ्री एम एल स्क्वायर दैट इज फाइव बाय थ्री एम एल स्क्वायर नाउ रिमेम्बर वेरी केयरफुली दैट इट इज फोर एम बिकॉज देर आर फोर रॉड्स टोटल मास इन टू रेडियस ऑफ गायरेशन स्क्वायर इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड आउट रेडियस ऑफ गायरेशन रिमेम्बर इफ देर आर फोर रॉड्स सो रॉड मास विल बी टेकन फोर एम राइट so you will equate and say sir 5 by 3 ml square will be equal to 4m into k square m and m gets cancelled k will be 5 by 12 under root times l and length is 1 meter so it is 5 by 12 under root got it first option is right moment of inertia of a uniform horizontal cylinder of mass m okay This is an important question. I'll tell you a hint behind it. Whenever this kind of question comes, when a cylinder is given where radius and length are comparable, okay. And suppose they are asking you about this axis. So what you say, you divide it into two parts. You will say if you consider this as a rod, then moment of inertia will be m l square by three. And if you consider this to be a disc. so this is a diametrical axis what is this this is a diametrical axis na right so this axis is nothing but a diametrical axis so if you consider it to be a disc then moment of inertia will be m r square by 4 are you understanding because for a disc about its diameter answer is m r square by 4 but when this kind of cylinder is given where radius and length are comparable you say overall will be m l square by 3 plus M R square by four. Now you can put the value of L is six R. So six R whole square by three plus M R square by four. I guess from here you can get the answer. It will be thirty six by three twelve fours are forty eight plus one forty nine. So answer will be forty nine M R square by four. It is given second option right. Okay. Now. Now, obviously, this is the perpendicular distance. Let's take it as R, R, and R. Okay. So the torques have to be balanced. So let's say the torque of this force will be 10 into R. Torque of this force will be same. They are in same direction, 5 into R. But torque of capital F is in opposite direction, minus F into R. Net torque is zero, so F is equals to 15. Can you see that? See. 10 newton is trying to rotate like this 5 newton is trying to rotate like this but f is trying to rotate in the opposite direction so that is why i have taken the torque of f to be negative now here the moment of inertia of the system about you see for this ring there is no problem it is about the diameter so it is m r square by 2 but here for these two rings this axis is the tangential axis can you see that Again, we will say that the axis applying parallel axis theorem, I C O M, this is I and this distance is x. So you will say I is equals to I C O M plus m x square. I C O M is the axis passing through the center of mass along its diameter. So we know about its diameter. Answer is m r square by two for a ring plus m r square. It is three by two m r square. Now, how many rings are like these? Two rings. So, overall moment of inertia or net moment of inertia will be m r square by two for the first ring. For the next two rings, it is three by two m r square plus three by two m r square. So, answer is seven by two m r square. Got it? Now, here they are saying there is a thin wire of mass m and length. L is equals to two pi r, so r is l by two pi. What is moment of inertia about the axis they have given m l square, m into r square by four pi square. Got it? Put the value of l. First option is correct. Forty fifth. A body travels two hundred centimeter in the first two seconds. Okay. We don't know the initial velocity u, and we don't know what is the retardation a. Okay. So we will say. 200 centimeter is equals to u into t plus half into a into t square. Then 
if we consider 2 seconds and next 4 seconds, so overall 6 seconds time, 200 plus 220, how much it has traveled? 420. So it travels 420 in the overall 6 seconds. I am not talking about next 4 seconds, I am talking about first 2 seconds and next 4 seconds together. That means I am talking about overall 6 seconds plus half into minus a into 6 square. Now there are two equations and there are two variables u, variables u and a. If you solve them, then you can find the velocity of the body at the end of the 7th second. Velocity of the body at the end of 7th second will be u plus minus a into 7. That's all. This is your answer. So get the value of u and a from these two equations and then you can simply get answer will come out to be 10 meter per 10 centimeter per second. Now they want acceleration c. x is given. What is v? dx by dt. Differentiate this. 0 minus beta plus 2 gamma t. Now what is acceleration? dv by dt. Again differentiate this. 0 plus 2 gamma. Answer is 12. 47. This result you must remember students. If you throw an object with velocity u or you drop the object with velocity u or you just drop it with zero velocity. So suppose height h is same for all the cases. Suppose it takes time t1 to come down here and it takes time t2 to come down here and it takes time t to come down here. Then this is the relationship that you need to remember. Okay, always remember this, this is a common and a very useful relationship. Okay. For a body falling with terminal velocity, the net force is obviously if it is falling with terminal velocity, that means buoyancy force, viscous force, and gravitational force. All the forces are balanced. That is why it is falling with a constant velocity. Now, where terminal velocity is constant, and if velocity is constant, means acceleration is zero. Acceleration is zero means net force is zero, and hence the net force is zero. Forty-nine. Simple. This is a square plate they have given, okay, viscous force is given to you, let's say length is L, this gap is L and it's moving with velocity V. We know the formula, V is equals to eta A into delta V by delta phi, right. Now you tell me, force is given, what is the force? Point zero zero two. What is eta? 0 0.001. What is area? Square, it is L square. 0.1 into 0.1. Velocity is 0.1. Length, delta y is L. I guess L will come out to be 0 0.0005 meters. Got it? Fourth option is correct. Now, the moment of inertia of a thin rod. Okay. So, this is a thin rod. About an axis perpendicular to the rod at a distance L by 3 from one end. Okay, from here. This distance is L by 3. Simple. You know this is the ICOM you find out. What is this distance x? So x is what? L by 2 minus L by 3 is x. That is L by 6. So you will say I is equals to uh, using parallel axis theorem. Simply. What is ICOM? It is ML square by 12 plus m l by 6 whole square 36 ml square by 36 so 4 ml square by 36 so it is ml square by 9 what it that's all for today i did it little fast so that you can understand this is how you have to solve in the examination as well okay so this kind of momentum you have to maintain then only you can solve 50 questions in just one hour that's all for today thank you students Tada, bye bye, take care and good luck for other exams as well.